Welcome in everyone, I'm Slayer. Today we're going to talk about overgrowth with vegetation. Now if you're not sure what I mean by that, I want to take an environment and I want to have the natural grass of the area take over that environment. You'll see this from time to time in parts of towns that are just worn down and no longer active. So utilizing several different types of assets, including props, trees, surfaces, and decals, we're gonna create this environment. Like in many of my projects, this is all about layers and textures to create what I think is a realistic look for overgrowth. If you enjoyed the tutorial, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Also check us out live where we do all these types of builds live at twitch.tv slash slay3k. So here's our work area along with the assets I intend to use for the space. It's a mixture of different types of grass, being grass that would fall into the category of trees and props, some surfaces, decals, and a few additional props like fallen trees and trash, along with an abandoned car. So you can see how vegetation can work together with props to create that theme that we're talking about. And you can see I've already created an area where a building has collapsed and fallen apart. That's a cool feature to have because normally cities doesn't include decay. We've talked about that a little bit and I'll talk about it a little bit further. But these are all things to make your city very unique. And from a detailing perspective, they can be huge ads and adding personality to your city. So let's start with an area between the road and the tree line. And then we're gonna to move to a slightly larger space where it's gonna encompass more grass. And then we'll jump on the space where the building has collapsed. So to start off, we're gonna use a gravel brush. We're gonna place this asset across the entire work area to create just this base layer. Now, depending on your theme settings or theme mixer settings, this base layer could be different. Typically when I'm setting up my map and I'm working in theme mixer, I'm gonna use gravel to be what I want the dirt to look like in the city. That can add a ton of value to using surface painter or these brushes. And by the way, brush assets are gonna work very similar to surface painter. It's gonna be the same texture you choose. I just prefer the brushes because they don't overlap different surfaces. For example, if you put it next to a road, it won't overlap something like the sidewalk with whatever the surface painter texture is. Now I've started placing in a decal and I'm using it pretty repetitively. This is one of my most popular decals and a lot of what I do. It's got some green in there. So it starts to give you the impression that something is growing like little patches of grass. So to keep it from being repetitive, I'm rotating it as I place it. Now, once you start adding grass on top of it, you'll notice those little splotches of grass in the decal sort of become your fade from a different surface into the overgrowth. I think what's troublesome about trying to do overgrowth in cities is creating these transitions. And some grass you're gonna use tends to not have great edges. It'll be like a hard edge or it'll be very, very patchy and it doesn't look quite natural. So you can see in the overhead view, we're starting to create the tree line and a line for the grass. It doesn't look quite natural yet, but we'll work on that. We're gonna take a smaller grass asset and we're gonna fill a little bit of the grass deeper into the tree line so it appears more dense. All right, so now let's grab some smaller grass assets. This is gonna be a mixture of weeds, grass tufts. This is gonna to start to create the variety that we need, especially along the edge. It's gonna to be tough to match the green across the board. So I try to use a variety of grass so that it looks more dense. And then it also gives a little more variety in what maybe grows in that environment. So first we're gonna take this weeds asset and we're gonna apply this to the edge. This is a great asset. I use it pretty often to create overgrowth. It's not very thick, but it gives you some height variation, some color variation, and starts to set the tone for the space. So we're gonna place this several times at different depths along the tree line. Then from there, we can start to add in some of the other assets to work on the fade and make the edges not seem so sporadic. So you can already start to see a little bit more diversity there. So now we're gonna take a fuller type of grass. It's got a hard edge, so we're gonna have to work to cover that up. And we're gonna insert that into spaces where we think we need more density. Placing it along the edge of the grass, you can already see the green really starting to pop. You can use this to fill in different spaces, but just remember that the edges are too hard to leave alone. You can actually see the edge of the circle, which again, is an organic. The grass is starting to look really dense now. We just need to add a little bit of variety on the edge to cover up those hard circle edges. So we're gonna use this tuft patch. And when I place this, you're gonna immediately notice how it covers up the hard edges with something that looks a little bit more sporadic and random, but it's very natural at the same time. Plus this has some color and height variation. So it looks pretty unique. So overlapping this tuft over the grass we just placed, you lose the hard circle edges and you gain something that looks organic. Make sure your overgrowth matches your theme. So if you're going for something like a tropical theme, your overgrowth may not look like this. You're gonna have more tropical plants, maybe some palm trees. You may have to look into other assets. The Steam Workshop is extremely helpful. And honestly, I'd recommend going to the Steam Workshop for these type of assets because you're gonna have more texture quality. I find it way easier to create these environments using Steam Workshop assets than I do anything in vanilla. 
the quality of the assets on the Steam Workshop can be really fantastic and super helpful in giving you the textures you want. Also, there's variety in the density of the assets on the workshop, so you can get stuff that is gonna cover areas better than just looking like way too patchy. So once you have your tree line set up, you have the grass in place, it's time to add some props. Something that can help with that is fallen trees. You could also use rocks, trash, anything you wanna put on the side of the road, depending on your environment. So this looks pretty good. It doesn't have any bushes in there, but we do have a solid transition from road, grass to trees. So what I see here is this height transition where the grass has been maintained enough to keep it off the road and no trees are growing too close to the road. I think that's how you sell the idea. Placing trees too close to the road, you're not gonna have the ability to create that transition. And that very transition is to me what kind of sells this. Also, you don't wanna make the line too consistent. You want it bumpy. So you can see a curve along the edge of the grass. It looks very natural. So a quick recap here is creating the transition, starting with your surface, your decals, then placing your bigger grass only to fill in with smaller grass, especially along the edge. You wanna create density, you wanna you want make it look thick, like it's unkept. And the variety of grass is significant because then it just looks wild. Now let's take a look at a bigger space. The tree line is further apart from the road, so we have more space to cover with assets. Let's see how we can draw enough diversity with assets to make this look wild. You'll note that these are actually props, so they are conforming. So even if you had a slight slope, they're still gonna work out pretty well. So like I did before, closer to the tree line, I'm going to use the more dense and smaller prop grass to fill in. Now I'm doing this without decals first. I want you guys to see sort of what this looks like before you add something as simple as a decal to give you texture. You can see it looks relatively flat, even with adding the weeds in. We're gonna use the weeds to fill in some of the dead space that the grass we've already placed is not covering but it's not very thick, so it's only gonna give us a little bit of help along the edge. We're in pockets where the grass isn't very dense. So let's use our other grass to create a little more density underneath the weeds. So using the same strategy that we used before, we're gonna start filling in the edge of the grass. We're also gonna fill in areas of the prop grass that we've placed first, where it's not quite as dense. Now obviously doing this, it can become pretty asset heavy. You'll have to judge what your computer can handle in order to use this many assets, especially in such a tight space. In some situations, you can check the try count on certain assets to make sure that they're not too high. You'll notice placing trees and stuff like that, you may get some lag. It could be that the try count on the trees is relatively high. Maybe you can find something with a little bit less of a try count that works better with your platform. So you can see we've already developed an organic edge. Essentially using the prop grass, the first grass we place down to give us a guideline is probably a pretty helpful way to figure out what that organic edge should look like. Then we're gonna use the third grass asset to just fill in and create a more organic line where some of the harder edge grass is placed. And with that, we build our variety and our density. So now we're gonna take our other decal and we're gonna place this along the road edge. This is gonna create our fade from our muddy road to our overgrowth. I'd highly recommend rotating this around several times as you are placing to keep it from looking too redundant. Now, one tip I often forget for myself is making sure all my assets are laid out beforehand. With this sort of density in grass, it's tough to duplicate on the fly. So try to keep everything sort of on a pallet in front of you. That'll speed up your ability to build and keep moving throughout an area, especially if you're using the same things over and over. Now you can also mix decals. I can take the decal we're using before, intermix it with the second decal we used, just to add another layer of variety to our build. It also appears less dry than the second decal we used, creating that fade and going from mud to the grass more complete. So I hope with adding the decals by now, you can kind of see what it does for your build. It's gonna give your terrain a lot more texture. Without it, you're typically gonna have a very flat surface. It's not gonna look as interesting and it's gonna look less realistic. Now I'm gonna start using these clusters. These are clusters of bushes and weeds. This is really helpful to add a little more variety and another texture to your environment. This along with fallen trees and rocks can help these areas really stand out. There's two clusters I like and we can intermix these throughout and we can also put them along the edge. And we're gonna use a lot of these as we move to the next phase of the tutorial. Placing these around will give a little bit of variety, especially in the grass, make it look less monotonous. I think the hardest part for some is creating something that looks organic. And I mean that as a difference between placing something that looks like it's planted or that it's set in a place by us versus something that just grew in that area. I think it comes down to just being as random as possible with placement. You need to be sure to cover up hard lines, especially for organic areas. I think when placing at random grass, shrubs, or any sort of prop, it's just a kind of training the eye to understand what looks 
organic, what looks natural versus what looks mechanically placed. I think it comes with time and practice. Now I get that the logic for that seems a little bit odd, it seems sort of the opposite. And I think you'll start to see what looks more natural over time as you continue to progress. I think one other area that some folks struggle is, is doing too much and finding that balance between doing too much and doing just enough to make the area look organic and natural comes as you progress through the skill set. Part of it is just finding the right assets that can help you out. I would also suggest looking around you in your actual environment and seeing how the grass works against fences or walls. How does it react? What's the texture beneath the grass? Is it muddy? Is it dry? What kind of plants are growing there? Are there bushes, shrubs, just tall grass? If you can come up with answers to these questions, then you can probably model better in city skylines. Why not mimic the best natural and organic environments that we have access to in city skylines by just looking at the world around us? You totally use images off Google, but being there and being in the environment gives so much more context. It can be a little bit difficult for even me to take an image and turn that into something in cities. Now in the natural world, we have decay. And I mentioned this earlier briefly, but decay is something that City Skyline doesn't have in just the base game. To make a realistic city, I think you need buildings that are dilapidated. You need destroyed areas, areas that are being reclaimed by the natural world. It's an incredibly fun environment to try to create because the rules are different. We're not looking for perfection. We're not looking for the perfect angles. We're actually trying to make something imperfect, as imperfect as possible. So if your goal is to do everything mechanically and everything is measured out, you're doing the opposite of what natural really is. So with a dilapidated building or a building that's fallen apart, we have to break all those rules. Now, when you decide on a theme, if it's a dilapidated area, an area that's worn down or something like that, you do want to have consistency with that theme. So we have a broken fence, we have broken walls, we have trash everywhere, we have ruins basically placed here. So the point is our props and other assets match what we're trying to accomplish with the grass. And as you can see, we're gonna surround the area with similar grass. This is gonna make everything that we've done thus far in the tutorial blend together as an environment. So, so far we've surrounded the building with our same grass that we've been using, using the same methods we've already done in the tutorial. I want it to appear as if the grass is encroaching on the building space as much as possible. Then we're gonna to continue to add different types of grass on the interior of the building including the smaller patch of medium height grass. We're gonna use this in corners where it's definitely stacked up where maybe people haven't wandered in as they've trespassed. You can see by kind of talking about it, I'm even giving it a story as to why I'm doing certain things. There's still old furniture and stuff like that left in the building that's been ruined from rain or being exposed. So from here, we're gonna take a variety of new grass that we haven't used. Tufts, grass that we can insert into the building and just add a little bit more variety to that space. It's going to look more like weeds when we place it just in specific spots rather than across a wider area. You could go with tall grass. You could grow with something smaller, something different. It's all going to depend on your environment and what you want to accomplish. Sometimes it's tough to find smaller pieces of grass that can fit in a confined area. So we may have to be flexible with what type of assets we're using. So we're going to go back to the clusters and we're going to use that to add a little height variation. It's going to look like bushes are starting to grow in some of the uh, vegetation areas. These are also really good at covering up some weird edges, adding a little variety with the grass and some space. Let's add some of the tufts patches just to make it look like weeds are starting to spread. We're also going to make some isolated patches away from the building. You can even take some of these types of grass and you can cover up little spots where the decal thins out and you can see the uh, surface brush beneath. There's some abandoned building assets that are available too that you could detail around. You could stack these prop walls if you wanted to to create higher walls and more variation. I think this is just a good foundation to show what these sort of spaces could look like. I'd also suggest looking at trash pops and figuring out ways to incorporate that around the building. So we're actually gonna take an abandoned car and we're gonna build a space just outside of the building that's just some leftover ruin. And we're gonna talk about how we can detail this with some smaller elements. Mr. Mason actually made a pack not too long ago of weeds that you can use to spot detail. We have to mix that with some of the assets we're already using. Dilapidated buildings and just trash areas like this, it's just a mixture of assets. Kind of layer them on top of one another. We have some pieces of trash, some piles of junk, the abandoned car. Placing them all together, we get a nice little scene. Now, obviously with some of the bigger grass and weed assets, sometimes it's tough to have things that poke through props. You may have to be a little bit flexible with that. I notice things sometimes cutting through or clipping through a prop or a building. 
I try to use it to my advantage when I can. Obviously overgrowth is gonna grow all around things, maybe not necessarily through a metal panel, for example. These assets are really helpful for filling in those little spots where you can't normally take a bigger piece of grass to fill in a space. Wherever I see an interesting patch of dirt, for example, in the hood of the abandoned car or between some of the trash is where I can use some of this to create a little bit of density. Also on things like fence corners or at the edges of walls, you can use some of these assets to give you a little bit more variety, a little bit more green here and there. Much like we did the wide open spaces, we wanna fill in with different textures, different types of grass. You wanna create density just like you would in an open space. It's about layering the assets, finding that comfortable balance between what looks realistic and what's overdone or processed, thought about too much. Obviously with our discussion of how grass reacts around things, we wanna keep it as wild as possible. It should take over an area. It should be breaking into that space relentlessly. We talked a lot about transitions. Those transitions can be more abrupt as the grass overtakes an environment. Now you are gonna need some mods to be able to do some of this. I would recommend having move it and find it so that you can move your assets around, you can find and search for different assets. Tree snapping is typically what I go with as well, along with prop and tree anarchy. I found with this set of mods, I can typically do whatever I need to do, including lift trees above the terrain level and place them wherever I need on like elevated platforms, for example. With tree snapping, you also have the ability to elevate certain tiers of grass when they're intermixed. That could give you uneven terrain with the vegetation itself. All in all, I think the most important thing is just learning how to layer your assets. Hopefully this is helpful in understanding how I look at it and my theory behind it. I think it's successful, I think it works. It can be a little bit over the top at times. It's sometimes where I need to go back and scale back the assets I use. But I think in summary, it's just really about layering these assets in, finding the right assets that look the way you want and how they interact together is really important. Build your asset list based on things like your theme, your climate, what type of environment you wanna have. Remember that your vanilla assets are not really gonna be able to create the look you wanna have. They're not gonna have the texture quality that the assets on the workshop have. Now looking at this, I see an overgrown area, a space that hasn't been taken care of. Maybe this is somewhere in a transition area between city and rural space, but it's dilapidated. Nature's taken back over. As with any of my tutorials, they're not always just about how to do something as much as to give you an idea of what you can do. It's to go over the theory of what crosses my mind when I'm thinking about an area and how I execute it. So I hope this is helpful. If you've enjoyed the tutorial, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Leave a comment if you have any feedback or a suggestion for another video. Check us out at twitch.tv slash slate3k to see us live. And we'll catch you next time.